If you're looking for really great recipes you can make for dinner every night, well, this show is for you. Next on Martha, the hosts of Everyday Food are back, sharing their favorite fall recipes with you to help you get a simple but delicious dinner on the table tonight. From short ribs with creamy polenta to roasted pumpkin to homemade shepherd's pie, it's a full hour of great recipes from Everyday Food. How to get a home-cooked meal on the table every night of the week. Next on Martha. with the challenge of what to make for dinner. Probably a lot these days. Well, I have a solution for you, and uh, it is called Everyday Food. A spectacular little magazine that's full of recipes that uh, will really help you get through each and every day in a healthy and easy and really delicious way. This entire show today is dedicated to this wonderful publication. It's the must-have resource for home cooks and ev in everyday food. We're uh, all about saving you time and energy and money in the kitchen. Every issue is filled with helpful cooking tips, simple recipes that are quick enough to make any day of the week. For example, take a look at these dishes. Tilapia with arugula, capers, and tomatoes. Simple to make, just a few minutes of your own time, and your family will eat something really healthy and delicious. Roasted vegetable salad with goat cheese. Now that is really delicious and healthy and unusual. And how about steak with tomato salad and creamed spinach? No one will push their plate away if they get served that at the kitchen table. And corkscrew pasta with oven-roasted vegetables. Another economical dinner. It won't cost you more than probably oh, a little bit more than a dollar a person at the table. And that's what we're all looking for these days. Um, we're also stressed. I'm stressed. I mean, it's like crazy. Every single day you turn on the television, you uh, watch the news, you listen to the radio, and uh, it's all about money, 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 the economy, the co economy, and we have to really watch our budgets and make the most of our food budget. In the audience today is our food editor and host of Everyday Food on Martha Stewart Living Radio, Sirius Channel 112, Sandy Glock. Hi, Sandy. Hi. So nice to have you here. Good. Really, really great. And uh, sitting next to Sandy is our editor in chief, Deb Puchala. Hi, Hi Deb. Martha. Great to see you too. Nice to see and uh, they are, um, uh, along with their creative staff, responsible for producing this award winning magazine. One of our new features is the Dinner Tonight blog. And um, it's so much fun to. Uh, to go to the blog and find a recipe that you can just um, take or you can actually access it if you have a BlackBerry or a, um, an iPhone, and you can take that recipe right to the supermarket on your way home from work. And Sandy, why don't you tell us um, uh, what people um, will find oh, on okay. the daily blog, well, Dinner I should tonight. say we are blogging away, and as it's <laughs> called Dinner Tonight, there it is, it's dinner that you can make tonight. But one of the things that we are really excited about is that it's interactive. So we get to talk to our um, readership, and they get to tell us what they think, and we respond. So right, well, it's very good, and uh, and so we're we're really building a, an awful lot of uh, traffic on this blog, and uh, so that we know it is very very popular. Right, I should say that lots of us blog, and as a matter of fact, Adina Steinman, our Hi, senior Adina. editor, is blogging right now as we speak. Oh, you are, and what are you saying? <laughs> she is. I want to know what you're saying. <laughs> Martha looks Only good today. things. <laughs> Only good things. Yes. And we have, it's very interactive, too. Very interactive. So, uh, and uh, how many people are responding every day? With, uh, are they giving us, uh, giving us their recipes? Dozens. They get Dozens. Their recipes, their response, and we, we, you know, we, we answer them. So if you comment, good or bad, it's usually good, but we will answer you. So, Deb, uh, you're, a, you're a blogger, too. Yes. Uh, what makes a recipe suitable for uh, what to have, what, you know, for, for this blog? Well, of course, Martha, it has to be of Martha quality, first and foremost. But it has to be fast, easy, and delicious. Basically, we're looking for something that we're going to go home and cook tonight, and we know our fans will, too. 
So it's not just opening cans and uh, prepared boxes. No, no, it's about in-season, fresh, good quality ingredients. Yep, and that was really the, the really the um, the challenge and the. Uh, and the, and the reason for our everyday food was that we, we want to cook fresh, we want to cook good, we want to cook nutritious food, and, uh, and, the, and we solve the problems. That's right. Yeah, it's really, really great. Well, you just go to MarthaStewart.com slash dinner tonight to find this daily blog. If you go to the home page, it's down, scroll down, and it's um, at the bottom center of our website, and, uh, and it has all the inspiration that you need to start cooking. And uh, what everyone at Everyday Food does best is to help you get a delicious and satisfying dinner on the table every single night. And since our first guest has a family of four hungry men to feed, big men, a husband and three giant sons. She knows just what hits the spot. Here with a really mouth-watering recipe for cheddar top, uh, topped. Uh, this is hard to say. Cheddar topped shepherd's pie. Say that four times really quickly. Everybody <laughs> is our editorial director of food and entertaining at Martha Stewart Living and co-host of Everyday Food on PBS, Lucinda Scala Quinn. Lucinda is now I'm calling you Linda. Lucinda is also trying to do the tongue twister. Yeah. And uh, so uh, let's begin with this delicious recipe. Yeah. Over here, of course, what an incredible. Now it looks like if you take a picture of this entire <laughs> counter, uh, it looks like a lot of cooking's going on. But really, for each meal that you can find in everyday food, uh, you will. Just use one pot, oh, yeah. two pots. This is super, super yeah. simple. This is TV, not home. You know, at right. home, we do it fast. <laughs> so you're going to get started here with our flavor base, which is just a little about a tablespoon of, of oil. Okay. We have six carrots chopped, six uh, celery ribs, and one onion. And, of course, that's the classic trinity of flavor bases there, um, just to kind of get things moving. Okay, start the onion first. Yeah, and I'm peeling the last of four potatoes that we've already got going here. So that's good. You're going to mash those. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's the topping. That is the topping. Okay. And the great thing, you know, again, about everyday food is that they have little tiny little tips, like right here. The potatoes are, are thinly sliced. How many times when you make mashed potatoes do you just put big chunks in there? It takes a lot longer to cook, It right? does, yeah. So, so this saves so, time. So it would generally take approximately an hour. How long do you this think this This takes about 15 take? to 20 minutes, and you've got your potatoes ready to mash. Okay, that's yeah. good. So you get your potatoes Is going. there any quicker way to cook a potato? Quicker way. Well, yes. I think it depends on what you're doing. A lot of the time, if I have an oven going for another dish, maybe yeah. instead of boiling the potatoes, I might stick them in the oven. You just kind of got to think, think strategically when you're uh, cooking at home. Right. So I'm just thinly slicing here. Beautiful Idaho potato. Now, it's fun sometimes when you're doing this to switch up the potatoes, too. Maybe you can use... try your knife skills on celery and carrot in this little triumvirate of vegetables, too, right? Yep, there you go. And this is a great knife, everybody. Uh, again, there's all kinds of tips like that, what kind of knives to use. This is a wuss talk, but look at this. It's the greatest. It's like a cleaver, a Japanese cleaver, and it uh, slices and dices really, really quickly. I sound like a commercial. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> what is it? Boy. Uh, chop it and forget okay. it. <laughs> so that's, this all goes into um, your olive oil. Yep, get that in your pot. And that, of course, is like a, a mirepoix mm. in French cooking, but, you know, for everyday food, it basically is a fa flavor base. And a little thyme. thyme. That's a, a secret. You have to have this highly flavored, beautiful, wonderful, delicate, but tasty. Okay, so when okay. you start, it's like this. After six to eight now, minutes, how many people? Here. This looks like it's going to serve This is going to serve eight people. Okay, or, and, or four hungry yes. men in your house. <laughs> right, and this comes from the weekend dinner section of the magazine, meaning it maybe take a little bit longer to cook, and it, and it will feed more people. Um, but as I said, in my house, it's Monday night and for four. Uh, okay. We're going to put into here a quarter cup of tomato paste, just to kind of, you want to mix that up a little bit. Let's get that. And then one other thing is a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. So we're going to just get a little bit of a, oh, a thickener in here before we start adding the rest now, of our this ingredients. Is, this is a beef shepherd's pie, not a lamb. Yeah, Traditionally, lamb, it's lamb, right? Lamb is shepherd's pie, and actually beef is cottage pie. Oh, okay. Um, but you know what? Any ground So why meat, didn't you call it cottage pie? 
Well, because people know shepherd's pie, and it's everyday food. I know, you don't but want it would have been cute if off. I saw a cottage pie in the magazine. I would have gone to that right we, away because I've never heard of cottage but pie. But we had to st we had to save that little tidbit for here and for you. Okay. All right. So <laughs> we have about a minute there, and then we're putting See, it. I two. have to have discussions with my editors all the time. I yeah. go into the everyday food kitchen every single time I'm at my 42nd Street office to see what's cooking, to taste, and I have a lot of fun in that kitchen. Yeah. It's really fun to see what's what's being developed. And all the recipes are developed right at 42nd Street and 5th Avenue in the 24th floor everyday food kitchen. That's right. Okay, so we have to hurry. Look, we yeah. have a sign. Yeah. The sign says hurry. Take a picture. Yeah, see, you have... you have Show everybody what the signs say. Two pounds ground sirloin. They you never could give use us turkey. Time you could use lamb. You could use chicken. You could use vegetable protein mix if that's what you want to do. Okay. Cook this, Martha, for about um, eight to ten minutes. Okay. And then come on over here. Okay, so the flour's in there. The, yep. Okay. And it's cooking. Did and you put salt and pepper in there? Not yet, because we seasoned over here. Okay. So here, you can see, you've got it all mixed up, right? And mm -hmm. it's been cooking, and it's nicely blended. It smells great. Yum. And then, a cup of water goes in. Okay, so just to make a gravy now. Kind of a gravy, and also just okay. to, it, remember, we have flour. So those two things so thicken up a little bit. So if you beef stock, left over. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, next thing we have to do here is we have to drain the potatoes. Actually, can we switch jobs because you know I hurt my back. So you're so much stronger than me today, I think. If Listen you this drain this. And hearty I and am. I don't know back. what the heck happened. You know, uh. I'm just, you know, what can I, what can I say? I just did to... not know. Do you always turn the cold water on? I don't, but you do, so I do. you do I... it? Same to the <laughs> kitchen drain. Um, for some reason, I'm terrified of my kitchen drain melting or, or coming apart. So I always run cold water into the sink before I drain well, bowl, uh, hot pots of pasta or whatever. Well, Martha, your drain is probably much nicer than mine, so I'm not terrified of it. Mine's well, no, just all I mean, drained. These... Okay, so I'm going to start by putting this mixture here in the bottom of our baking dish Well, while you drain there. And are we going to mash right in this pot? Yeah, we're going to ra mash right in the pot that you, okay. you, you cooked in. And this smell here is really sensational, mm. I must say. Now, how about steaming potatoes? Sure. You, you can just steam if cook you want. Them. Huh? Yeah. Now, okay. you know, if you... Yeah, I'll tell you one thing about this dish. If you have a big family, and especially if you have a lot of boys, you really have to make friends with ground beef. You need... Cause, <laughs> cause, because you stretch that. Boy, you know, you I, ever like, stretch I it. like ground beef. I do, too. I and, do. And uh, I okay. was just saying, I love making hamburgers out of it. I love making meatloaf. I love making... Things like this. Oh, b a bolognese sauce oh, for your course. spaghetti. You know what's another dish we do at home a lot is tamale pie. Oh, you which do? Which has got like a cornmeal on top, and yes. um, that's really delicious for the family. Okay, okay we're running out of time. Mashed potatoes, <laughs> one cup whole milk, um, and salt and pepper. Some cheese. White cheddar is what makes into, this really in, special. Right in, in there. Right oh, in really? there. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, in here. Oh, I thought yeah. on top. We're doing that, too. It's double oh, okay. duty. you got to okay. really keep them interested. Okay. All right. So once you get this all in... Nice and, and if you have a potato masher, you can do this. But if you have a KitchenAid mixer with the flat beater, you can get really nice mashed potatoes in a couple of instants. Yeah, that's but true. But this looks good. If you feel like getting another so this mouth is, dirty yeah, that you have to but clean. you don't have to. Right. All right. And this is good. And actually, give this to one of the boys to do. Exactly. They love mashed potatoes. Oh, my potatoes. God. You know what? We're is running out of time, and that okay. looks beautiful. It does. It's so fine. let's just get this right on here. And we'll put kind of like, if you put it in sort of blops, and then you use a fork to make it look nice. If you have a little extra um, buttermilk, you can put buttermilk into the mashed potato. Ooh, if you had sour cream left over, you could do that. Uh, you could also add heavy cream if you're not on a diet. So 450, yes. Martha, for 25 minutes. Okay. And an extra 10 minutes. One other great thing about this, you can do in advance to the potatoes and the meat in advance. Layer it when you're ready to cook it. Cook it for about 10 extra minutes, and you've mm. got a beautiful meal. Mm. Here we are. Delicious. <laughs> Yum. Now, that, I would say, is a successful uh, one-dish supper. Of course, serve a green vegetable on the side. Oh, yeah, boys always. Demand always, it. always. big salad, right? Yeah, always. Okay. Well, and it's a great flavor contrast. How lovely. Chef we'll be back with another simple recipe from another everyday food chef, so don't turn off your television. Later, Everyday Food Radio host Betsy Karatnik joins Martha to share her family recipe for braised short ribs and creamy polenta. We'll be right back.
this. Our wickedly wonderful countdown to Halloween continues with the coolest kids costume show. But there are no ghouls or goblins here. How you can make a simple and inexpensive costume from your child's favorite fairy tale book. But first, from the Emmy Award winning show Mad Men, please welcome Brian Back next Martha. And coming soon, a special interview with Tim Russert's son, Luke, on Martha. flavorful and nutritious and delicious meal comes from our associate food editor of Everyday Food. In addition to developing recipes for the magazine, she shares her passion for cooking and her knowledge about food on Martha Stewart Living radio and television programs. Please welcome back to the show, Emma Feigenbaum. Hi, Emma. Hi, Martha. How are you? It's great to have you here. I'm just making sure the stove is off because it feels like it's on. Oh, that seems important. <laughs> and uh, this is I love stuffed peppers, and oh. when I saw this recipe, I thought, oh boy, I have to try that because I try every recipe for <laughs> stuffed peppers. Well, these are fun. These are yeah. our Greek stuffed peppers from oh, they're, our... And they're such beautiful peppers. They're gorgeous. What a gorgeous, a gorgeous, gorgeous color. So easy to prepare. Very easy. And this should take how long to cook from start to finish? Um, these are an hour and about 15 minutes because the prep time is very quick. Okay. Um, slow cooker surprises. This is our section in everyday food. Oh, okay. So um, we're just going to cut off the tops and right. sliver off the bottoms. Um, but not, not completely. This not is, completely. This is a mistake. Half these bit. are stuffed peppers. <laughs> the stuffing will go right out the bottom. So and what I'm going to do just to, sa to save that is put this little piece of pepper down oh, in here. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I've done this sort before. Of, Sort of barricade yes. them up there. And I'm gonna now. Now you cannot drop the stuffing. That's out. a great oh, idea. And mess. since we're going to be cooking them in a water bath, that'll ensure that the water okay. sort of doesn't leak out. So take the ribs out and just make the. These are so beautiful because they hardly have any seeds or anything inside. These gorgeous block these peppers. Are beautiful. You can tell those they are nice are. peppers. Yep. So. Mm. Oh, that looks great. And okay. I'll take care of this guy over here. Okay. And then scallions, how many? Four? Four. Okay, I and can do that. What we're going to... Just chop? Yep, slice them thinly and um, separate the whites and the greens okay. from each other because we're going to save the greens for garnish. Okay. Um, which is nice because then we'll have a little bit of green on top. All right, done. so just very, very thinly sliced? Mm -hmm. Okay. So pretty when you get to keep a little bit of the greens at the top. Okay. And these are going to cook in a Dutch oven. Um, so they, uh, okay, Dutch oven or a slow cooker. Which is so nice because you can choose to have them either later in the day or, um, you know, in an hour. Or if you want to cook the night before for tomorrow, you can do that um, while you're eating last, whatever you prepared last night Absolutely. for tonight. Absolutely. Okay. And you can put these in the refrigerator um, um, the evening before. You can prepare them all the way through, put them oh, in the good. refrigerator and have them. Okay. Um, for yourself in the morning and pop them right in the slipper. Okay, so here's our scallions. Lovely. And these, you want to slice the same way? Yep. Okay. And we're going to cut up the tops so you don't waste anything. Chop these right up and put them in the bowl. These are going to be part of our filling oh, as well. Good. Okay. So these are going to get chopped now, up. This is, you say it's Greek, so what makes it Greek? Well, we're going to put some feta cheese in there into the filling and some oregano, which is one Very of my, Greek, right. Very Greek. And, um, I just harvest, harvested my oregano. Oh, I love oregano. So I'm drying some. I, I um, froze some. And, I didn't uh, even... Now, how do you freeze oregano? Oh, you can just take all the leaves off, and then I just freeze the leaves. Oh, wonderful. Yep. Now, do you freeze it straight flat in, um, like, a, a zip-top bag? Yes. Or do you, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, it's you, so have to, fragrant. you just sort of throw it into a dish while it's still frozen. Don't let it thaw because it turns sort of black. Now, we use a, ta a teaspoon of dried oregano here because it's such a pungent herb that even a little bit goes a long yes. way. Okay, so here's our greens. Wonderful. So where are we putting all this We're stuff? We're going to put this into this medium bowl right here. The whites go right into the bowl. Okay, but I'll reach with, All right, here we go. Here. Yes. And then okay. some of the chopped tops go right in here as well. Okay. And then we have, our, should I add the crumble feta? Yes. Oh, what about, where's our couscous? We have a half cup of dried couscous. Oh, so it goes in just like that? It goes right in like with that. With the cheese? It goes in with the cheese, oh. which is great. The couscous cooks right into the peppers, oh. which is, you know, it's amazing okay. because... What about the garlic? Clove of garlic. We're going to chop that up and throw it in as Here's well. Another. another pepper top. We're going to go, everything goes into pepper, everything cooks. So we're going to stuff the peppers. And the water goes right in here? Yep. Oh, the water goes into the, the oh. bottom of the pot, and everything is going to cook right into the peppers. Oh, okay. So let's chop that all up. 
And how much? Uh, and then dried a can oregano? of cannellini beans is going to go in there as well. A teaspoon of dried oregano. So everything's going to cook right into the peppers. Oh, okay. So mix it all together, and then we're going to stuff the peppers, cook them in a pot, in the oven, 350 degrees for an hour. Okay. So, oops, that's going to go into the peppers. Oh, excuse me. Oh. I made a big mistake. Quite all right. I think we could probably rescue the stuffing. Okay. Oh, so stuff the peppers stuff with this. Stuff the peppers and then going to go okay. into the pot. Let's very easy. And Get the idea? Mm -hmm. So the Stuffed couscous peppers. the couscous cooks. So let's throw these in the, the pot. Okay. Okay, like that. And here's and the this finish is what look like, like magic. After an hour in the pot. Okay. And I'd say they look absolutely gorgeous. Oh. And then we're gonna top them with our scallion greens. Yum. So it's healthy because it has beans and couscous. And this would be wonderful served with um, a little side salad. And this is a wonderful vegetarian entree because it's 259 calories. So it's really light and absolutely mm. gorgeous and delicious because it has lots of protein. And I will take a little taste. Very delicious. Be sure to watch Emma on the number one cooking show on PBS, the weekly everyday food cooking series. Thanks so much, Emma. Thanks, Martha. Coming up, the cooking continues when Margot Olshan joins Martha to make seasonal roasted pumpkin with shallots and sage. Stay with us. My next guest is the co-host of two of our radio shows on Martha Stewart Living Radio. Very nice to have you here, uh, Betsy Koretnik, and she's the mother of two, wife, uh, also co loves to cook, uh, but how does she do it all? She says her secret to her success starts with this. Please welcome back Betsy Koretnik. And that's, that's the secret? That's the secret. <laughs> I, why walk that talk? Yep. And uh, so what are your favorite recipes that you have found in everyday food? Oh my gosh, I probably use it at least three or four times a week, and that's to feed the family. That's not just to practice what we talk about on the radio. Right. But um, like last night, well, I made a sloppy Joe recipe from the Great Food Fast Cookbook. Uh -huh. All the recipes came from everyday food. You start your day, work day at what time? I am there at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. 6 a.m. And you get home at? Um, 2 to 3 o'clock. So that's good. So, so you have time good. to really make supper. I do, except that I'm driving. I drive them everywhere for oh, the next do. four oh. hours. So, and I think oh, everybody knows what you're that's like. You're a soccer like. mom or a hockey mom? I'm, I'm not just a soccer mom. This year I'm a soccer coach. I'm a oh. soccer coach. So it takes a little bit of time. So it's all in the planning. And the Sundays for my mom, I learned Sundays, that's a day you cook. And if you can do half on Sunday and then the rest through the week, you're going to be better off. Oh, and that's good. where so everyday food comes things, in. freeze things or do you... I freeze things. I cook ahead. Um, it's one of the recipes we're talking about today. This is one my family loves. And we do both. We eat it, and, and then we freeze we're it. we're going to make braised short ribs, and uh, these are so delicious. Okay, so a little olive oil. A little olive oil in the pan. Okay. And the short ribs, you know, if you now can't you can find use... them, ask the butcher, because okay. they're there. Yes. And it's just like a stew, except that it's on the bone, which okay. makes it super delicious. And so I... You're going to season up the okay, flour so a little bit, a little salt, salt, a little bit of pepper. and pepper, okay. Give it a stir, and then you're just coating the short ribs very briefly shake off the excess and then you're browning them okay. in a pot super simple but not Do all it. at once no, no. two okay. batches because otherwise they're going to steam rather than brown you want exactly. the delicious flavor you want a little bit of that fond in the bottom of the right. pot uh, it's delicious that way once they're okay. all braised this is my favorite part about the recipe you actually don't have to chop anything big chunks of onion big chunks of carrot go in the pot once those short ribs come out okay so like one onion or two onions one onion Two, uh, two onions, this is four carrots. For, this is enough for how many people? This looks this like a recipe, lot. This recipe, it's from our weekend section, but it, it serves eight, but I use it for the family to do two meals. So we'll eat one, we'll freeze one. I got one in the freezer now. Oh, good. Because of the last time we ate it. And, and then uh, how do you, how do you um, prepare it once it's frozen? What do you do? Do you just stick it into the oven or? Uh, for me, I like to make sure it's defrosted fully in the fridge. So I'll take it out in the a morning. night or maybe even a day or two before, pop it in the fridge, and then I might 
either pop it in the oven or a little bit of liquid in the bottom of a pot, okay. and then you put it in again. So these are going to brown. Those the are brown. The vegetables are... get color, maybe three yes. to five minutes. You don't have to do a lot with them. You're going to add in a can of tomatoes. Oh, a whole can. Whole, okay, so whole that's can. Tomatoes 28 in sauce. ounces. Yep. You're going to add in some broth, and you're going to add in my favorite part. It's the wine. Oh. I siphon a little bit, depending on the day, or you get another bottle. But okay. this whole bottle of wine can go in there. And well, here, then, pour it in. Pour it in. And then we're going to add yourself. in also a, a little bit of thyme. And again, you see how super simple it is? It goes right in on its yes. branches. Well, I love the flavor of thyme. Now, so at this time of day, so I'm not pouring you wine? a whole bottle of okay, wine. Okay, so this again, is not the, four this ounces is not to the, the chef least hurt. expensive dinner, but you're getting two dinners if you're a family of four, right? But shop smart for the wine because you can get great wines for under $10. Yes. And you're cooking with it. Just make sure it's something and you want to try. And 14.5 ounces of um, beef stock or chicken stock. Or chicken broth. Okay. And again, that's a can. You buy that when it's on sale. Okay. You keep it in the pantry at all times. So bring this to a boil. Put your ribs back in. Put the lid back on. This is a Dutch oven. A super oh. heavy pan will work as well. Mm, these are. I love Dutch ovens. I love this kind I of cooking. I do cooking. too. That's my, that's my. But this is Dutch a weekend oven. cooking. Don't don't come home tonight at six o'clock and expect to have this ready for your dinner at seven. Okay, so make it make it the night before. Make it or make it or on the a Sunday. Weekend. It could yes. be for a Monday or for a Tuesday. Or Once, for Sunday dinner. Oh my gosh, it, what a it, delicious it's really, dinner. We had it on Sunday. Oh, you well, did. I was practicing. Okay. It's for you. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, put nice. the lid on. 400 degree oven. You always preheat the oven. Okay, so you're going to serve this with what? I'm going to serve that. Uh, after it heats up, it takes about two hours in the oven. 400 degrees first, then 350 show, for show an hour. Show what it looks like, because this is all done. This is all done. Once this you take it out. This is what it looks like. Look how it's gorgeous. gorgeous that is. It's it is. glazed. Oh, it's... Now you're wondering where the vegetables are. We did strain it and okay. we did reduce the sauce a little bit. Okay. But then if you want to do something other than potatoes, it would be great with potatoes. But other than potatoes, you can do a polenta. We have a creamy polenta from the magazine. Okay, so a, one and a quarter cups of season, polenta. So we're going to season the water first. Okay. A couple yes. of tablespoons of salt, teaspoons of salt. Okay, two teaspoons. A little bit of pepper. And you'd be, you'd be surprised at how much this seasoning mm. will do for the water and the polenta. Then the polenta goes in, okay, and so we're stirring it. Stir. I like to put it in slowly so you don't get lumps. And this is great for the kids because then they're occupied with the cooking and they have that pride of dish they're thing happening. They're not whining for their dinner. Well, they're whining, Martha. Oh. But you know, well, if they're <laughs> athletes, anyway. if they're athletes, they're going to be hungry. They're they're hungry 24/7. Yes. They're hungry from morning till night. So that polenta takes about 10. Maybe 12, 15 minutes on the stove, and you'll know you're going to taste it. I always add a little more salt at the end. It takes a lot of salt. Okay. Then you take it off the heat, and put in a couple in tablespoons butter of butter. Time. Yep, and we have one here. It looks mm. beautiful. Oh, does that have the butter in it yet? That does not have the butter okay. in it. So you can put a couple so. tablespoons of butter. Mm. And again, another tablespoon of thyme, and it goes beautifully with the short ribs. Yummy. And that's it. I usually serve it with a roasted vegetable of some kind, like a green bean, or cauliflower. Doesn't that look spectacular? Oh. It, I mean, it's like eating mashed potatoes all day long. It is. Well, I Can't love really do polenta. Than and then a, and then a beautiful, beautiful short rib. And then we mm. take a garnish or two, and we're done. And everyone Mom, thinks Mom, I want fancy. two. <laughs> That's what they'll say. But isn't that gorgeous? And it is falling off the bone delicious. Thanks, Betsy, oh, for sharing one of your family favorites from everyday food with us. Just give it a little taste. It must be delicious. Well, we'll be right back. Still to come, Martha has a good thing to show you for storing all your everyday food magazines. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm here in the kitchen with everyday food co-host Margot Olshan. And we're about to discover how sweet a sugar pumpkin like this can be. And Margot, welcome. Thank you. How's great the restaurant going? So great. Thank Mar you. Margo has a restaurant in Stamford, Connecticut. Tell us about it and where it is. Margo Cafe and Wine Bar in Stamford, Connecticut. And uh, it's a lovely little European style cafe. And I have to say, with everything that's going on in the economy, we are a great value. So we're doing very well. Knock wood. I, I am everything so, is good. And you brought your daughter here My today. My daughter's here. Hi, how are My you? My little girl. Good, really great. Remember great little to see Mary? you. Yes, little Madeline. I mean, she's like uh, grown up. Where are you at school now? Um, I go to NYU. I'm oh, a junior. wonderful! So you're right around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Excellent. Well, it's so nice to have you here. It's nice. To are meet you me. following in your mother's footsteps with cooking? Yeah. Not really. I cook sometimes, but. <laughs> 
I'm not. But wh it. why cook when your mother cooks as exactly. well as she cooks, right? <laughs> right. Well, um, so let's get started. Okay. Now, they said it was easy to, I, I've been hacking away at this uh, <laughs> pumpkin since I uh, got on the set here. Do we have I'm, a medic on set? We're not going to do this. <laughs> okay. Cut the bottom off and the top off. Right. I need, I actually need a machete. These, these, these seem, are a little hard. Yeah, some, harder than yeah, you would find in the grocery. Find a soft skin sugar pumpkin, right. little sugar pumpkin like this, and uh, cut the top off, the bottom off, and then peel it. Peel with, it with one of these. And okay. you know, they gave me a great tip I in the kitchen. These, I think these are from last year. <laughs> Maybe they're fake. Maybe these are I fake. I think these are fun I, Yeah. I, I think if you banged it on the floor. <laughs> They're, they're doing that on purpose. Uh, yes. That's right. That's right. You're sabotaging us. Yes. Okay. So here is one this is already. This what it looks like peeled. Yes. And then. So here's your knife. Okay. Okay. So cut it in half. Uh, yeah. We can cut it in half. Nope. Oh, no. Knife. But we're supposed to hollow out the seeds. Yeah. Well, you know what? You can do it either way. Okay. Okay. I'll do it in half. Okay. And you can do it that way. Yes. Once and it's through the skin, you can just take out yeah, all those seeds. Yeah, it's much softer. Seeds. Save those. Save them. Roast them. Didn't we always roast them oh. when you were a little girl? Always. Yeah, we never. Always. I, not every seed had to be saved. It was yes. just in, very important. A uh, little salt, little any kind of seasoning you like, and roast them. So, all right. Well, we're going to move on. Where's here. my pumpkin carving kit? It has that fabulous nice. scraper. You yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great Perfect tool. Perfect for getting out the seeds. All right. So scrape that all out. Cut mm -hmm. it into chunks. Let's come over here. Okay. And, um, sorry, I shouldn't be touching my hair while I'm cooking. These okay. are about two inch pieces. Right. They actually shrink, as you know, after you cook them. So, what a great simple recipe this is. Oh. A little olive oil, about three tablespoons. But you were always good at roasting vegetables. I do it all the time yes. at the restaurant. Yes. They're excellent, they're great, they're healthy, yes. and so People easy. People love that. So, about three tablespoons of really good um, olive oil. Olive oil. Virgin olive oil, green olive oil, yes, flavorful okay. olive oil. You can right. smell it. That's what makes the dish. These are shallots, and they're quartered. If they're giant shallots, go a little smaller. But let's just put them all Peeled over. Peeled and quartered. Mm -hmm. And this is sage, which we have. Oh, don't you love sage? Yes. But if you don't have sage, you could use thyme. You yeah. could use rosemary. But this looks really great yep, once you cook it. It does. And, yes, let's and spread those out. And a sprinkling of freshly ground Salt. black pepper. Yep. And, salt. of course, salt. That's it. And... So I always toss it a little. Yes. Well, I do it with my hands, yeah, of course. Okay, but. okay so this goes beautiful. right into what temperature? Uh, about 450 degrees. And uh, for about a half hour. And turn them halfway through. We always rotate. And you can even toss them a little bit. Yeah. And they come out. They have this beautiful... Now, how many of you in the audience roast vegetables like this? Do you do this on a regular basis? Easy. Easy. Oh, good. Right. So you can do carrots, you can do parsnips, you can do turnips, oh, yeah. sweet rutabagas, potatoes, sweet potatoes, yep. Butternut plain squash. potatoes, and here they are. Yep, oh, they it's... are caramelized, beautiful, and um, the mm. sage is just kind of dried. I like to okay, eat. I love to eat herbs like that. Yes. Oh, this looks so good. This is my lunch. Uh, oh, and you know what else? This would be so great just put on top of a boiled pasta. Yes, that's what I Wouldn't was going to say. Anything left over, mm. turn into a meal the next Notice day. I'm taking pasta. half. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is so flavorful and Beautiful. so delicious. Oh, here, that's oh, for you. Thank I'll, you. I'll make thank me you. A, a dish, too. And uh, this is a, another spectacular healthy recipe from our wonderful digest-sized magazine, the magazine that you can put in your pocket. And they wanted me to remind you, PBS, of course. Oh, and of course, uh, from our everyday um, uh, cooking show on PBS. And congratulations, it's number one food show on really? PBS. Yes, yes, uh, it is. Hey. Thank you very much. Thank you. When we return, I'm going to show you a really good thing for organizing your magazine collection. Attention. Welcome back, everyone. Well, uh, since our entire show today is devoted to our little digest size magazine, Everyday Food, I'd like to share a good thing for storing issues of this compact magazine. Uh, it's really great to have them uh, all at hand on your bookshelf in your kitchen and this functional holder is made of mat board and perfect for keeping your magazines organized and contained in one place. You know how difficult it is you think oh gosh I want to make that butternut squash 
that I saw last October or November, and you can't find the magazine. Well, now you can if you make these nice little holders. And it's a, a very nice craft project. Uh, give it to the handy teenager in your family. Uh, I wouldn't give it to a five-year-old because you have to use very sharp implements to cut the mat board. But the template is on our website at MarthaStewartDown.com. Uh, Just download this and print it out. Enlarge it to exactly 200%. Uh, and so we have enlarged it. We used four pieces of paper for the enlargement. And, um, and that is your template. You can put this right on top of the mat board. And then you cut this out exactly. Um, and um, here we have it on the mat board. And to cut it, you can use the uh, sharp little exacto type knife and a cutting surface. Don't cut on your uh, wonderful marble counter or your mahogany dining room table without a mat board. This mat board, look, I can cut straight through it and it self heals. These are the best, th I, I always show that because I'm just amazed myself that it, now that cut has disappeared. Why, I do not know. And I'm going down through the whole point. Look at this. I love doing that. It's something about the surface. And I did not have those growing up as a child. We always had to do it on wooden breadboards and my breadboards are a mess and I still have all the old breadboards from my grandmother and grandfather. So, okay, so using a straight edge and some good old-fashioned elbow grease. Cut through, you might have to do two cuts to cut through. And uh, of course it is cut through perfectly. And go all the way around the outside of the board. The curves take a little bit more concentration and you can't use a straight edge, of course. And here we have the whole thing cut out nicely. And we're going to fold along the dotted lines, but you have to score with your knife um, to, um, to, and I'm gonna go right through with, again, with a straight edge. You're going to score the dotted lines. And you don't wanna cut through, you just want to cut through the um, thickness of the mat board, leaving, leaving um, the paper on the outside intact. So there, we're cutting, scoring it, not quite as heavily as cutting through. And this will allow you to fold this. Watch this, hopefully it will work. See, you just gently bend. Yes, it's perfect. There. It's amazing what these, how strong these wonderful mat boards are. And now we have this one all completely cut out and folded and we're going to put it together. The first side that you put together is this um, back flap. This will give you the height for your magazine. And you, so you apply a little bit of glue to the, I think this top is on there. Just draw a bead of glue down the length. This is very strong glue. You can get this at the craft stores, Michaels, Walmart, Independence, and hold this together with a clip. These clips, you wonder what, you're, what are you going to do with those, all those clips that you have all the time showing up, you just use them to affix these edges together. And hold that until the glue dries completely and Fold up the bottom, again, apply the glue, stand it up, let it dry, and fill the finished container with your wonderful favorite everyday food magazines with all those recipes that your families enjoy. We'll be right back. I'm joined now by Lucinda and Emma and Betsy and Margo, and we're going to take your questions in just a minute. But um, I want to first introduce the art director of Everyday Food, Alberto. Hi, Martha. Uh, it's very nice to have you Hi, here, thank Capolino. You. It's, uh, he works very hard to make the pictures of those beautiful dishes. Uh, 
look as good as they taste. And you do a great job. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You. And I also want to introduce two staffers from the first international edition of Everyday Food. Uh, it's now going to be published in Mexico. Uh, and we're so excited about having our first Spanish language magazine. Fabiola uh, de la Fuente, welcome. Hi. And uh, also the publisher, uh, Luis uh, Seolis. It's very nice to have you here, nice too. And, um, and it's so great. Uh, I'm very excited about this, uh, this edition of the magazine. We are, we are too. too. Yes, and uh, so then uh, it's just our first uh, step into um, Latin America, and we're, we're just thrilled about it. And uh, it's coming up in the next month. We have a whole hour devoted to um, uh, our Mexican trip. We went down to the Yucatan, and they are looking for this magazine. So they will be having it at what time? When? When was the we're first? We're planning on January, February. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So we're going to publish six times a year to start. Ten, ten times a year. Oh, ten times. Yes. Oh, great. Well, I'm I'm just so excited. Us too. Very, very wonderful. And now it's time for this special edition of Ask Everyday Food and the editors. Uh, so anybody have a question in the audience, you can direct to uh, one or all or uh, anybody. Hi. Hi. I'm Simone D'Souza from New York, and I have a question for each of you. Um, I'd like to know what's your favorite recipe to freeze? Oh, okay. Lucinda? Um, I generally like to cook fresh, but what I like to do is take meat and slice it up and put a marinade in it and freeze that so that I have the uh, makings for a quick stir fry when there's no meat in the house and maybe a few veg. Emma? Um, I love to oven roast tomatoes at a really low temperature and then I stack them with a little bit of olive oil and um, either um, zip top bags and um, freeze them flat. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. And Betsy? Well, you know, my Sirius 112 listeners, XM 103, because we're expanded now, yes. gave me this one. They're all about freezing soups and stews. So oh, I and freeze and everything. Soups, soups freeze so well. That's one of the few things that I do freeze. They freeze beautifully. Yeah, they Tomato do. sauce as well. They do. And Margo? You took my answer. Oh, I was going to say stews. Yeah. <clears throat> stews are, just make a whole lot of it, and then you can break it down and, and freeze it. Definitely. And the same, if you make stock, Make a good stock and then break it down into quart sized containers, put them in the freezer, and you can make a quick, yeah. quick soup, yeah. you know, like that. Okay. Another thing I like to freeze is applesauce. And especially now because oh. I have so many apples. Yeah. So I freeze lots of uh, pints of applesauce and Ooh. then I eat that with my yogurt in the morning. Oh. It's so good. Yeah. Okay, another question. Yes, I'm Kathleen Dempsey from Morristown, New Jersey, and my question is for Lucinda. Lucinda, I have two school aged children that I'm cooking for and I'm trying to incorporate more greens. We get a little sick of this olive oil and garlic, yeah. so can you make some other suggestions well, for I, us? Well, I have to say that that's great, because we did that early on in our house, and we have greens every single night on the, on the table, one form of it. Cabbage, very, very, very thinly sliced and mm -hmm. a quick fried. Uh, cook collard greens, long cook them with a little bit of bacon. Once you get bacon in there, the kids will be interested. Um, <laughs> Swiss chard is another thing to switch up, same way you do spinach, do Swiss chard. Um, I mean, I could just keep going. And, and if you do it early on in their life, they will like them later. Kohlrabi steamed. Yeah, steamed. Oh, they love kohlrabi. Well, thank you all. I wish we had time for more questions. They're great. We will be right back. Tune in to the Martha Stewart Show Thursday, November 12th for our Dreamers and To-Doers special. To learn more about the finalists and vote for your favorite, go to MarthaStewart.com slash Dreamers. Everyone in the studio audience is getting a copy of the October issue of Everyday Food and the Everyday Food Cookbook. You're going to love it. Watch Everyday Food on your local PBS station. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for great ideas to make Halloween costumes that your children are loving. You all want to know.